Hi guys, it's me again. So as you saw in the last video, we got the bumper in a little compartment area. Didn't quite get it filled in. So today I'm gonna build the fair lead mount, hopefully figure out something with this and do some more redesigning on the front bumper. Cutting a bunch of stuff off, adding some stuff, adding and subtracting and doing all the things that I need to do. The internet's really mad about me cutting this Ford grill, but if it was my choice, I'd cut the center out of it. I opted to leave that little blue oval. So we're fine. Hillbilly's working on a Jeep inside the shop. Steve's out on the tow truck. So it's just me and the boss today. I've made myself a little CAD drawing. I didn't have cardboard, so I used my paper. This is the booklet that comes with your winching. I'm sure it's really important to read, but uh, I used the back. Anyway, this is what I'm gonna go make. I want this fair lead mount to stick one inch out and then angle back. It'll all make sense here in a minute, I promise. All right, so I've got my CAD drawing all put into the computer now. Look at that, it looks the exact same. Makes sense in my head. So I'm gonna export this out, burn it out on the table, and we're gonna go. So I put some lines, because I don't have a press break, so if anybody knows where to get a good press break, that's like little, that I can do cool stuff like this, like no bigger than like two feet. Um, That'd be super cool. I would love to get a press break. Sorry, what I was saying is I made little slits so I know where to bend and so it bends easier because this is quarter inch plate and I'm gonna bend it in my vise. So I'll get this cut out real quick. All right, so I got it all programmed in. We're gonna set it up on the table. You get it, cut it out. So what I'm gonna do is I got Hillbilly here to help. We're gonna try to bend this over. This is our press break. In a perfect world, this would be in a press. <coughs> nope. Hillbilly's gonna grab a hammer. And we're gonna undistort that center. If I wouldn't have that long of the table, it probably would have fell on you. You live and learn and then you get the right tools. It's working, but not very well. All right, so that's sort of what we wanted. Now these sides have to bend to conform to that. So they basically got to go to nothing. I'm going to clamp this up. Huh. Hey, Billy. Yeah. I'm about to pull the table over. It's fine, I got it. I got it. Why not use the press with the plates to have well, the... that work. It's actually not too bad. I kind of like that. Probably didn't need a cut there. Oh. All right. I think we got it bent. You can see that all can be welded now. So what I want to do is go see if it's going to fit. It fits pretty dying good, if you ask me. Look at that, exactly what I needed. I wanna bolt the fair lead up, make sure that's gonna be correct. And then, yeah, we'll go to town and weld this all up. So I'm gonna go through and get all this welded, pre-putting it on, then we'll go over and we'll get it welded on that front bumper. That is sizzling hot. But I've got the front side all welded up, I got the inside all welded. I left a little bit off of each corner so that I can weld it flat. That is just radiating heat. But it looks pretty good. I'm pretty happy with it. We're gonna go and try to make this become part of the front bumper. We're gonna put this right in place where it needs to be, to where we can weld it in solid. That is hot. We might need pliers. We're gonna, I'm gonna tack it and then we'll make sure the winch can come out and then I'll finish welding it all up. Should look pretty good. It'll be a nice little closure. One thing I am going to do, just because I've basically, I'm, I'm basically going to build a little fishbowl, um, I'm going to drill the corners out after I get done welding it. So I'll have some drain holes here, and I'll have some drain holes at the back. That way if water gets down in here, when it gets down in here, it can drain out. Hey Robbie, instead of drilling holes, why don't we just spray undercoating, rubberized undercoating in there? It won't rust, but it'll fill up. Then you grab a siphoning straw. <laughs> That's why the fish bowl is going to get holes. 
that was so hot. When your gloves fit, but they have holes. See, they're still new. Those ones are mine. Yeah, so I'm wearing XLs, but I bought some new larges. Hot, hot, hot. My hands are just burned to crispies now. Triple up your layer. All right, so Hillbilly had a good point. We're gonna grind. We're gonna grind this to get a little bit closer. It's got a little bit. Right there, it has a big hump out. Okay, go grab the grinder. All right, so we've got this tacked in place. So it's not going anywhere. Hillbilly's gonna make sure we can get the winch out. And we're gonna make sure, we're gonna make sure the fairly bolts on and that the bolts don't hit. If they do hit. I'll tell you this much, there's a lot more room in between there and there than what there is on the- On the other one? The trekker for the receiver mounts out. <laughs> so I think that's gonna work for us. But is this lined up with the holes for the bolts? I mean, it's fairly close. All right, so that's right where it's gonna sit. The fair lead, it's gonna look real nice. Anyway, so Hillbilly, execute the removal of the winch. It's just gonna make sure we can get it out. Voila! Look at that. Just a little, little, little fish bowl. We got that even all the way across. I'll be able to burn a weld in there, weld it up the sides. I have to do everything super difficult. It can't just be flat. I had to make it all contoured and spend half a day making one bracket, because that's how we do it. Oh, it's on my shoulder. Owie, owie, owie. I yeah. hate welding upside down. So I've got this all welded on. So I'm gonna let this cool off. I'm gonna go grab some tape. And I'm gonna start figuring out how to redo the edges. I do want to cut this off and I want to build some bars, but I've got to let this cool down for a little bit. So I welded the bottom side, welded it inside, outside. That is not going anywhere. So I'm just going to let that cool down because that is super, super hot. All right, so something cool just showed up. Steve just unloaded the semi. I'm going to show you guys what it is. This is a five inch BDS lift kit for a 2024 GMC Denali. Looks like Adley's helped me unload it. Check that out. See, that says BDS suspension. That's a BDS suspension. We got a five inch BDS lift kit and we've got box 2.5. Actually, I, I don't know if they're 2.5 or 2.0, but Steve's going to get the box shocks that they sent us also. We're going to take all this stuff up, this stuff up to Kevin. Get it all powder coated, candy blue. So these are the new upper control arms. So we're going to actually have to press out the bushings and the ball joint because we're going to get this one powder coated also. All right, so we've got all the suspension unboxed, the new spindles, the drop brackets, the upper control arms, all the cross members, skid plates. We're going to get all of this stuff loaded up to head to Kevin so that when he gets done with the bumpers that we took up the other day, we can take all this stuff up and exchange him. He's going to be powder coating these and my wheels, that blue, awesome candy blue. So. Thank you BDS Suspension and thank you Fox for hooking us up. This is gonna be going on the Onyx tow vehicle, my 2024 GMC Sierra 2500 Denali. The time has come and this stupid old bar has to go. So I'm gonna hurry and plasma it off. Let's start laying out some tape lines where I'm gonna cut and we're gonna hack this bumper to pieces. Wasn't so bad. Won't be needing that anymore. All ground down. This is taking like an hour just to grind this stuff. It's taking forever, but I've just got a little bit more here. And then I'm gonna start figuring out where we're gonna cut this. I wanna hack this thing apart. And then I wanna build some bars that come up over top. These bars are probably gonna be bigger than I like because I wanna put two lights in them. So it might be a little bit wide. We're gonna put two Baja Designs LP6s, make this thing super bright. And then I'm gonna put some lights that are flush mount in the bumper and they're gonna be angled. So the angle of the dangle is gonna be like here. And we're gonna surface mount them so that they project out. So this thing's gonna be lit up like a little Christmas tree.
How can you feel that with your glove on? How? Just from all your experience or something? Or it's hard to feel. Oh yeah, I can feel it. I can feel some of them, but not. All right, so five hours later, me and Steve got this all ground. So I've kind of got an idea. I'm gonna cut six inches off of this end and we've got a main brace right here. So that's the whole center section has a bracket. So my first cut is I'm gonna cut and remove this top piece. Then I'm gonna cut the face out most likely. But anyway, this tape will burn. So all I'm gonna do is, oh, I'm gonna attempt to make myself a nice little straight line. Okay, in a perfect world, that'd be straight. So anyway, there's my line. I've got it mapped out over here too. Okay, that well, one you worked. did a straight line yeah. on that one. That one worked a heck of a lot better. I'm gonna hurry and cut those out and then we'll decide what to do from there. This is kind of a improv bumper building. You guys are literally getting it firsthand. I don't even know what I wanna do. You don't know what I wanna do, but we're gonna figure this out together. All right, so that is semi-straight, and that's out of here. Starting to really, really come together. I'm gonna leave the bottom connected. At some point, I might reconnect it. But what I'm gonna do now is make a cut along this line because this is gonna get kind of angled. And I don't know exactly what angle I want yet. I'm just gonna start cutting. All right, we'll get that to close in. Okay, so that's pretty close. I like it. I like it a lot. I'm probably gonna use like some two by four or some two by three or something and put on the bottom to make this thing really strong. Obviously, I'm not doing that tonight, but probably should tack this. So I'll throw a couple tacks across this. We'll get the other side cut, and then we'll figure out what my next plan of attack is gonna be, because I don't know yet. All right, so I've got that all tacked up. I'm probably gonna do like four inches here. Maybe we'll hurry and make that cut. So if I use two by three, that'll give us a three inch piece here. I don't know. Anyway, let's just go ahead and do this. So I like making things simple. It'll go to four inches. Then we're gonna go all the way to this corner. Steve had a good idea. We're just gonna use the level. Hold it there. All right. That's so much straighter. Sometimes wisdom comes with age, and Steve's older than Definitely me. Definitely got that. So Steve wins in the wisdom department. Voila! Is it perfect? Absolutely not. Is that okay? Absolutely. This side's tacked. I'm gonna hurry and grab Steve's level. We'll measure out four inches and we're gonna cut it. Pretty rough, but I think it's looking pretty good. All right, so it is late at night. Me and Steve are working the midnight hour, trying to get this bumper done. We have a super awesome video coming on Friday with Donut Media. You guys do not want to miss it. This one, we did it in August in secret. None of you knew we did it. So make sure you guys tune in then. But that's all I've got for tonight. This place looks like a bomb went off. We'll get it all cleaned up in the morning. We're gonna keep working on this bumper. But it's starting to take shape like I would want it to be. I really like the way it's looking. We're gonna make it rugged, but sleek and have some cool lines, put some awesome bars on it. But we're not gonna do that until tomorrow. So I'm gonna go home and get some sleep. It is tomorrow.
All right, so it is the next day and we have some awesome stuff planned for today. We were gonna get back to work on finishing up this front bumper, but I have some things to do. We've gotta do an awesome test. So our friends over at MoClamp sent us a big humongous clamp with instructions. So as you see, this is still, this is raw. This has not been painted, nothing. They just forged this, I think, or cast it or something, I don't know. Cast still, I think they cast it, whatever. Whatever they did, they want us to destroy it. We're gonna do a cool little experiment and we're gonna hook it up to the frame rack on two towers and we're gonna pull this thing till it either breaks, tears, disforms, or does nothing. They've gotta figure out the working load limit of this clamp, so we're gonna do a destruction test. I vote it does nothing. I wouldn't be surprised if it does nothing, but it would be way cooler if it broke or did something cool like that. Thanks Alex and Craig for entrusting us with your mo clamp. It's gonna be epic. And then we got a tractor to fix. So we're gonna do a little bit of metal work today. Show you guys the process of straightening a tractor. <laughs> It'll make sense in a minute. Just stick with me. We can put our hook in here and our hook in here. So that way we can totally just I, I don't feel like this chain this clamp is gonna break, but I think the chain or the bolt will fill for this clamp does it. Mo clamp deep hook. Boom. So we're gonna do the destructive test on this clamp here. As you can see, it's a redesigned, re-engineered clamp. It's a little bit different, but it hasn't been rated yet. So that's what we're gonna do today. And then after that, we're gonna do our second destructive test. We're gonna see where this hook fails at, if it fails. So we'll do that after. All right, so we have three cameras set up. So you guys are gonna get a little bit of everything. So we're just gonna pull until something happens. Yeah. We're maxed out. It didn't even wiggle. A 10 ton pull, which is 20,000 pounds of tower, did absolutely nothing. We're gonna see if we can break this link. This one might break, but it might not. I think it's the hook that broke, not the link. It just slipped. We pulled and this hook deformed but we gotta figure out at what pressure. So we'll do that in the editing and tell you guys. The link stretched. The link, yeah, the link stretched and this deformed. As you can see, this is what it's supposed to look like. Let me show you the difference. You might be able to read it between the two hooks. China. Anybody catch that? USA, Chinesium. So we're gonna try to get this to fail completely. So we're gonna rehook it back up. This time I'm gonna hook it right here. Now that it'll fit, now that it'll fit on a link. All right. Take two. So this is already deformed. But we're gonna see if we can actually break it and send it to the moon. Okay, everybody stand back. Yeah, that's up, Chris. Right. We're down. <laughs> See, you told me not to hide behind a box. Watch yourself. Oh, we're maxed out. I'm gonna go ahead and say, I'm gonna go ahead and say it's deformed. We are maxed out, it did not break. Yes, it did. Yes! Got it to break. That is exactly what we were after. <laughs> Where's the other piece, though, Billy? Look at that. We did it. Can we put a hole in the wall? Yeah, right down there. Kabang! We deformed the center, pulled it straight, but the weld did not break. We ended up breaking the hook. Looks to me like this is a BA hook. So, my guess is this is a new product but it, was, it almost withstood 10 tons on each side. That's 20,000 pounds each side. So yes, this failed, but it failed at an astronomical amount of pressure. We are not sending the test dummy back to MoClamp. We're keeping it. All right, so now that the destruction part of the day is over with, we had our fun, it's time to get back to work. So we have a local Kubota dealer. They just did a cab swap on this Kubota. It's a L57 
It's an L5740, just a little snow blowing tractor. So the new cab that shipped from Kubota came damaged. And this is a, like a very expensive cab. So I'm gonna show you guys how to get this dent out, get that dent in, raise this up without having to change it. So we've got all this back here that a tail light needs to fit on. This is pushed out. So we're gonna have to, that's gonna have to come off. What I need to do is I'm gonna move King Fred out then we're gonna move the tractor down the alleyway and I'm gonna use the wrecker as a dead stop that I can do my pulling off of. All right, so I'm gonna grab the wrecker, back it up so that I have something to pull and put pressure on the fender so I can get it straightened out. These are the size of tires the trekker needs. Yeah, don't, don't give Hillbilly any ideas. The reason I wanted this is I wanna be able to pull straight out. Don't know if this will work fully the way I've got it set up, but we'll see. All right, so I've got a good amount of pressure on my strap. What I wanna do is start relieving some pressure. So this stuff is like, a lot more stout than I thought. Another thing I'm probably gonna do is I'm gonna have Hillbilly pull this window because I don't want to break it. Does it get a look? Kind of bad at first, but I'm we're just kind of beating it. So this is what I need to do. And then I'll fine tune it. See if I can get this to go in. We got some stretched metal we're dealing with. We're gonna grab a few more tools and we're gonna keep getting it straight. I'm gonna switch my hook over to here so I can pull pressure here and get that buckle to go back in. So it's sort of going how it needs to. I've still got a buckle in here. So we've got to pull more pressure out. With metal, you're just basically trying to release pressure, and manipulate it with, manipulate the metal where it'll go back into place. So I'm using these pliers to flatten the metal and manipulate it where I want it. The last thing we want to do is bust a brand new window. So we are taking it out. But as you can see, this thing's starting to form back into shape. It's not perfect. But we're gonna keep working on it. All right, so we just realized I can't get a port of power in here and I've got a brace underneath here that's bent. That's why this is all dipping down. So in order to get that up, we've got to push the brace up. To push the brace up, we gotta pull the tire off. So Hillbilly's gonna grab a jack and an impact and hurry and get the tire off. Just start cranking it. It's not coming up. Let's grab the bigger port of power. Oh, we go. This is what I'm trying to get out. There's a brace right here, so I can't really get. That's the tip of that. So light it off. We're gonna try to change attachment. Trying to get this little valley out. I've got this, I started hammer and dolly in this. It's not quite, this isn't perfect, but it's getting there. Pull. All right, so we've just about got this where it needs to be. We've got that buckle out of it. I mean, it looks terrible, but this stuff's thick. So what I'm gonna do next is I'll grab my grinder. We'll shape it. We'll make sure that it's not horrible. It'll get a light, light coat of filler. While that's got pressure, I'm gonna hurry and just hammer and dolly this a little bit, and then we'll grind it. We've gotta fit our tail light and we've gotta fit our flare. So what I'm gonna do, is I'm gonna sand this before I grind it. I wanna figure out where my highs and lows are, and then I will take and I'll tap my highs, try to tap out my lows, and then we'll grind the heads because this is pretty thick, so we'll use a little bit of the metal 
to grind out. So we don't have a ton of filler because we don't want much of anything on this. All right, so we've got this kind of close. What I want to do though, is I think I want to fit the flare. Now based off of the other side, the flare does not fit very well. Well, that kind of sucks. They sent brand new flares and it just so happens to be the new one, the side that we need is damaged. The passenger side is fine. So this is flared out way too far. So we're gonna get some pressure right here and I'm gonna bang the sides in. See, we can't even stretch that over. Okay, hold it. All right, so now we've got pressure. Roll these in. Now that we've kind of got it manipulated, I want to see if the new tail light will fit. So this is what came with the new cab. Size. Ooh. 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 Looky, 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 looky. This is like a oversized glove. But that's not bad. Look at that. That's the side needs to go in just a hair. But we're getting close. Let's let's keep going. So as you can see, job well done, kids. Flare fits just as crappy as the other side, but it fits and that's what counts. So I'm pretty pumped about that. We're gonna need just a tiny, tiny, tiny little bit of filler. Tail light fits, phenomenal work, Hillbilly. Phenomenal. I ran the jack. You did a great job. So I only have one spot right here that I wanna get the high spot out. So when I put the flare up on there, everything fit really well except for this. All right, we'll get the tail light off. I'm gonna grab my grinder. And I'm gonna get everything ground to where I can put a little baby skim coat. All right, so I've got this all ground, sanded. This is ready to get some filler on it, smooth it out, almost have this puppy finished. You guys saw it before, it was pretty dang screwed up. So we've just about got it to where it's gonna be good again. Anyway, I wanna work on it inside. So I'm gonna go grab Hillbilly. It looks like you don't even need mud. All right, we got it inside where it's much nicer. So I'm gonna hurry and mix up a little bit of body filler, get it spread so it can start to harden up. All right, so we've got this all spread. I'm gonna stop messing with it. Looks a little rough, but we'll let it harden up. We'll come back and we'll sand it all off. All right, so this is hardened up. I'm gonna get it all cut down with some 80 grit. After the 80 grit, we'll 180 it with a DA and get it ready for glaze. All right, so I've got it all roughed out. I need to tap a few high spots, do a little bit more hammer work, and then put a second coat of glaze on it, and this will be ready to be primed. But I don't wanna bore you guys with all that stuff. We're gonna finish in the morning and this will be off to the paint shop. So we learned an awesome, valuable lesson today. King Fred, our awesome wrecker, isn't just a wrecker. He's a lot like us, yeah, multi-use. He's, he's a multi-use tool. So we were able to use the wrecker to get the body work done. And as always, we appreciate you. If you enjoyed this video, go check out this one. Isn't King Fred considered a jack of all trades? Yes, he is. <laughs>